Ancora una volta il cantiere Lomac ci propone una sfida adrenaline. Once again, Lomac Shipyard proposes an adrenaline challenge. This is the seventh model of the adrenaline series and it's the largest, the 10.5, measuring 9.62 meters. La gamma parte dai... The range starts at 7 meters and the common denominator is their speed. The deck layout is the same as previous models, and also the care with which it has been built and finished is, as always, the same, high standard. Up forward, an area that, depending on the occasion, can serve as a sitting area, a dining area, or a sun deck. In front of the deck house, a seat for two people, and underneath, a double bed. The furniture is oak, and the toilet is hidden, but not separate. You can also dine at the stern. The table is integrated into the mobile kitchen, where we also find a 50-litre fridge. The sofa offers seating for four, and the backrest, when reclined, serves as a headrest for the sunbed. The stern locker is a very large compartment that helps us imagine the possibility of the next version having inboard-outboard engines. A poppa abbiamo due motori Yamaha da 300 cavalli che ci fanno... On the stern, we have two 300 horsepower Yamaha engines that give us an idea of their thrilling performance. But pay attention, this inflatable boat has a rather impressive structure. It is large and solid with a light weight of 2.5 tons. And then it is three and a half meters wide. In short, a beautiful beast with a body that was not exactly built for racing. Before heading out, I had a look at the propellers. They are not very long. Their pitch is 21 inches. Yes, yes, but the reduction ratio of these Yamaha engines is very low, so the propellers run very fast. In practice, it's as if, in a car, we always use a higher gear, let's say the sixth, and this leads us to believe that the engine wouldn't be very quick to respond or have a very strong pickup reaction. Do we want to find out? 10, 15, 20, 25 knots. How much time has it been? Almost none. Well, I would definitely say it has a great pickup. Let's slow down a little and begin to control the ascent starting from the minimum planing speed. Ecco. Here we are. This is the minimum pace. That is the speed that the hull can continue to plane, even in extreme conditions. 12 knots, 2,100 RPM, a consumption of 37 litres per hour overall. Now let's try to find the best cruising speeds. It's not very easy because these engine controls are a bit difficult to move. 25 knots, the consumption is 50 litres per hour, which means we travel half a mile on a litre of fuel. I just increase the gas a little and we are already at 30 knots. Engines are at 3,500 RPM and consumption is 60 litres per hour. In practice, we keep to half a mile with a litre of fuel. But is consumption a problem? Consider two aspects. The fuel tank is quite large, it holds 560 litres. And as far as cost is concerned, well, know that this inflatable boat has a basic price of around 100,000 euros, not including engines and IVA. We are at the beginning of winter, and this windshield is quite useful. Yes, the air is cool, but it is deflected nicely, and you are just caressed by a gentle breeze. Then I give it some gas. It gets exciting. The sea is a bit choppy, and don't try to tell me it isn't so. The cameras always end up flattening it a bit, but the waves, the waves here, are high. There are two characteristics that play in favour of the stability of this inflatable boat. One is its width and the other is its tubes, which remain very stressed, but as such, they effectively perform their duty. Look at them. The 
in virata non devo cambiare traiettoria, mantiene perfettamente la rotta che ho impostato. In turning, I do not have to change the trajectory. It perfectly maintains the course that I set, and this is due to the correct hull structure, as well as the good weight balance and position of the seats on the tubes. In short, when the boat is banking in a turn, it doesn't bounce over the air chambers, but it keeps a regular trajectory. Hanno installato i fuori bordo su un bracket, una struttura applicata allo specchio di They installed the outboard engine on a bracket, a structure applied to the transom which would allow the use of an inboard outboard engine on this model. But it is also useful to further separate the propellers from the hull and in this way increase the propulsion efficiency. Ora notate la sicurezza e il controllo che si riesce a ottenere anche quando si cambia now note the safety and control that you have when you suddenly change course, which could happen, for example, if you accidentally bump the wheel. The reaction is always very composed. In any case, always remember to fasten the security detachment, both when you are going slowly and when you are going fast. On these waves, at this speed, <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> With the sea at the stern, I better give a bit of trim and see what happens. Guys, 50 knots of speed with these conditions, but the engines have only arrived at 5,000 RPM. And if they arrived at 6,000 RPM, well, we could estimate a speed of at least 56, 57 knots maybe. Just think that according to the Lomax Certificate of Approval, this Adrenalina 10.5 can also be equipped with two outboard engines of 400 horsepower. I'd say that this is not the time to challenge the laws of physics, and this configuration to me already seems like quite the rush of adrenaline. <laughs>